Hello, happy Friday. <laughs> Welcome back to this channel, to another video. Before I dive into the topic of this video, which I'm sure you guys can already tell from the thumbnail and the title, just give this video a thumbs up and, you know, just know that every time you thumbs up a video or like a video, you are truly, truly helping this whole YouTube algorithm to recognize that my video is there and recognize that there's interest in it and then spread that to other people who it may just be perfect timing for them to hear whatever message it is that you decide to help spread. So with that being said, let's go ahead and just dive into the topic of today. So today I'm going to talk about my marriage. <laughs> Um, and a big, huge, huge realization that I had regarding my marriage actually yesterday. So yesterday marked our three-year anniversary of being married. We've been together six years, my husband and I. And as many of you may know, if you have been tuning into my most recent videos, and if you're new to this channel and new and this is your first video watching, first of all, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for sharing some of your sacred time with me and uh, I do hope that you stay on and continue with me on this journey. Um, but for those of you who have seen some of the last videos, you know that I recently, um, this month, launched an immersive. Um, and as I've been moving through the immersive with this wonderful, wonderful group of souls, I've also been looking at my soul map with fresh eyes. That was one of the biggest things that I wanted to enter into this immersive with beyond making sure my energy is in check every time I speak to these beautiful beings, every time I share any pieces of the immersive with them. You know, I wanted to make sure that I also was going to get a lot out of it. You know, I wanted to make sure that I was going to be able to see a whole different layer of my life that I hadn't seen before. And this is just one of the many realizations that have occurred for me during this immersive time. And we started on the 15th of this month, so today is what? The 25th. So it's literally only been 10 days in. And I've already had many realizations beyond what I'm going to share today, but this one was one that was just very, very intense for me. Um, so one of the things I realized while looking at my soul map and my husband's as well, because I look at both of ours because we're in a partnership and a marriage, is that both of our maps distinctly pointed out getting married and specifically getting married quickly and getting married early, as in young in age. And so I'm 20, how old am I? Oh my God. I'm 26 going on 27 in September of this year. And my husband's 25. So when we got married, I was 23 and he was, what is 25 minus three? Oh my gosh, you guys. He was 22. <laughs> he was 22. Um, so that was fairly young. and. He, I had graduated college the year prior, and he literally graduated college the day before we got married. It was a very hasty union as far as we were together for three years, so we're, we've been together a total of six years, um, and so we were in a relationship for three years, um, but then when we both consciously made the decision that we wanted to get married and that... We didn't want to just wait forever to do it, just to wait just out of an excuse because we knew what we wanted. Um, I think it was within two or three, two or three months, um, we were married. And it was just a really beautiful story, just a really just miraculous how it came together. I mean, the family, the whole family, both my side and his, came together and chipped in to make this wedding happen. We were originally going to go down to like the courthouse get married and then maybe you know celebrate in Connecticut and then come back here and celebrate um, but the whole family came together and truly made it a really really beautiful moment um, and it was a really crazy weekend <laughs> um, so yeah I mean beyond it being so spot-on with the hastiness and the earliness of the marriage 
it was just so many different points within the map that would point back to that partnership and that marriage. And it hit me really hard yesterday to the point that I, the only way that I could express it was in tears. I just, I just started crying. I was just like, it all hit me at once. And so what really hit me was, you know, like, yeah, you know, to see that it, it showed me divine timing in a whole different way. You know, divine timing has been something that's just been very, very heavy on my radar the last couple months, um, very, very heavily. And it just showed me like another layer, you know, like peeling back the layers of an onion. It showed me another layer of what divine timing is. And it made me go back and realize that the moment that I met my husband, you know, was literally perfect timing. I was in a space where I had gotten my heart broken so many times that I decided I wasn't going to date anymore and I was just going to spend time with myself. And I was going through a lot internally. And that's literally when I met my husband. And we were just friends at the time. Uh, well, actually, he was very interested in me and he pursued me. And everything fell together just very organically, very beautifully. Nothing was forced, any of that. Um, which was a total opposite of anything I've ever experienced in a relationship. And just the timing of us being at the same college we were in, because I had debated on switching schools prior to him enrolling. Um, I had debated on even going to that school in the first place. He had debated on going to that school in the first place. He had his eyes set on another school. Um, and then, you know, things just happened to work out perfectly for us to end up being right in the right spot at the right time. Considering we were both from Connecticut at the time, because I was living in Connecticut at the time when I went off to college, and he was from Connecticut, and so both of us living in the same state, really not that far from each other, and never having met, and then meeting in college by chance at a college that neither one of us were sure we wanted to go to, and I wasn't sure after my freshman year if I wanted to stay, you know, all of those things, just divine timing. There's no way to explain it. And I would always just joke around and say that it, you know, was a coincidence and all that stuff. And then yesterday it just made me realize this was not a coincidence. This was literally just like a divine plan coming, playing out before my eyes and I didn't even realize it. Um, so that was one thing that I realized. But it was just that one realization opened up this huge door into me realizing that every single point in our lives together have been divinely timed. Meaning every argument that we may have had, every time that I may have been upset with him or him upset with me, or every time that together we've worked through things as a couple and being able to look back just in general and seeing where we were six years ago, three years ago, and seeing where we are now being totally different people. I mean, for those who have known me my entire life or those who knew me in college know that right now I am a totally different person than who I was back then. Um, and same with him. He was a totally different person than he's been all his life than he was six years ago than he was three years ago. And it just showed me that all of those moments mattered. You know, even when I was frustrated in the moment and just felt like, you know, having my moments of, why am I with this guy? He gets on my nerves, you know, or whatever the case was. It was all purposely happening for a reason. And it just hit me so hard because I just, I realized that he has been my deepest mirror. I mean, everybody in our life is a mirror to us, showing us, you know, the changes that, we do need to make within ourselves in order for our souls to grow. And he's been my deepest mirror of all time because I, I just, I, I, and this was a huge part of what made me just start shedding tears last night as well, was just realizing how much I have grown and changed because he was this catalyst, you know, and that's not to hinge everything on him and say that he did the work for me, but he was there as a very, very, very deep mirror to show me the things about myself that I probably wouldn't have otherwise realized, at least not in the amount of time that I've realized it being a very short period of time. It probably would have taken me 20, 30, 40 years 
to maybe realize down the road. And that alone made me appreciate my husband on a way deeper level than I've ever appreciated him. It made me appreciate our relationship on a way deeper level than I ever have. It made me appreciate just the divine timing of everything and recognizing that even if I am frustrated or mad or annoyed, you know, that that is just as life-changing as the moments when we're happy and where we're peaceful and content and blissful. You know what I mean? It allowed me to really embrace the duality, the full spectrum of our relationship, of him as a person, of me as a person, of our growth as two individual beings and as two beings who are the same at the same time. You know, it really just opened my eyes to everything that was our relationship and has been for a long time. And I really just in that moment was just like in shock at how much we've both grown being catalysts in each other's lives. And so that then opened another door where I began to appreciate every person in my life, whether it was just a small interaction or a large one, whether they're a family, an acquaintance, a friend, an old friend, an ex-boyfriend, an old relationship, it didn't matter. It allowed me to realize that every single moment is divinely timed and every single interaction is just, it is divine, it is, it's sacred. And in those moments, you may not appreciate it, but it just flicked something on in me where I really finally got it. You know how they say to be in the now, be present, and all of that. It really allowed me to, like, turn something on in my, and just in my being, where it was just like, I finally got it. And I was just like, this is what it means for me right now to be present. It means not just being there in the moment, it means appreciating it, whether it's good or bad, you know, good or bad, whether it's something that hurts me or makes me feel good, you know, realizing that it's all working out for the greater good anyway at the end of the day, and that every single thing that I have experienced in my life, every interaction, every person has been a catalyst in my life to change and to grow, and to just become who I am today, sitting in front of you, talking to this camera. <laughs> um, and so yeah, I mean, it was just a really, it, it, it hit me all at once, and it was just like, everything just expanded, and literally the only thing I could do was cry. I was in the middle of talking to my husband, and I was frustrated at the time, and I just sat there for a moment and just got really quiet and I couldn't control it. I just started I just started crying. And I at first didn't even know why I was crying. I'm sitting there thinking in my mind like why the heck am I crying? <laughs> Trying to like calm myself and cuz I rarely ever cry. Um and so, you know, trying to calm myself and, and stop the tears from flowing cuz you know, that's one of the human things we're taught to do is to not let the tears flow. Um but no, that didn't happen. They just, they just flowed anyway. And it was a mix of frustration, but then it was, it moved from being a, a frustration to just utter bliss and happiness and just being at like peace and contentment with life. And it was a really beautiful moment for me, to be honest. You know, it was a really expansive, awakening, just moment where everything just made sense. And yeah, I just I just wanted to I wanted to share that with you guys. And I already feel that it's already it just that moment alone shifted a lot of things within me. A lot of just ways that I perceive things and perceive people. I have such a great appreciation for people now. I mean, it's it's very easy to take people for granted, whether, you know, again, it's a family or a boyfriend or a girlfriend or whatever it is, you know, especially like relationships and friendships and things, it's easy to take them for granted. But when you realize that you, these people are in your lives for a reason, you know, you begin to see beyond just the mundane, you know, you begin to get to the soul level of it, the spiritual level of it. And it's such a beautiful thing. It really just brings this 
great, great sense of appreciation. I, I mean, that's the only word that I can really say is appreciation, you know, and even though it can be so frustrating, you know, dealing with people and dealing with their shit and having them be mirrors to you because really dealing with their shit is you dealing with your own shit. And I just appreciate it, you know, and I can, I can, I don't know, my life has just changed from that one moment and just realizing that the good and the bad is beautiful. The ugly and the beautiful is beautiful. <laughs> you know, it all really works out for our good. It really does. Even if in the moment it doesn't feel like it. Like, it truly does. And that's an attitude I've had for a couple months, like, really, really intensely. But yesterday just took it to a whole nother level. So that's what I really wanted to share with you um, today was just an aspect of my relationship that just blew my freaking mind. And it's always the most simple things that, you know, take sometimes the longest to realize them. But when you do realize them, it just shifts your whole life and how you live your life. I mean, it shifted my life to the point where I have now decided I want to wear my ring on a daily basis. And I'll tell you, one of the biggest reasons why I didn't want to wear a ring was because way back when we did get married, I had already had this understanding that the ring rep was a representation of the planet Saturn. This was when I was like doing conspiracy theory stuff, so you know. Um, and I associated Saturn with being evil and with dealing with the matrix and dealing with time and death and keeping you bound in this this box this matrix my understanding now totally shifted uh time to me because time does exist in this realm that we're in obviously in the spiritual realm no time doesn't exist but we're not in the spiritual realm we're in a physical realm that happens to be integrated with the spiritual and so we have time. And divine timing is a very sacred and beautiful thing. Why would I want to hate it so much that I don't want to have anything to do with any symbols of time? Right? That was one thing that clicked in my head. Secondly, Saturn is not evil. Saturn is literally a force that causes you to perfect yourself it causes you to grow as a soul that is what the force or energy of saturn does it's not about let me see how i can make this person's life miserable let's see how we can kill this person off let's see how we can just make this earth a living hell for this person like that's not what it's about it's about being tested over and over and over again until you get the lesson and you grow from it and you change your ways. Once you do that, you're no longer tested on that anymore. And yes, you continue to get tests throughout your life and sometimes they hurt and sometimes they're annoying and sometimes they're frustrating, especially when you're in the beginning of your journey and you haven't quite gotten tests under your belt yet. As you mature in your journey, Anytime a test hits, you recognize it immediately and you're just like, all right, I know how to deal with this. It's not that serious. Um, but that's what the force of Saturn is, you know, and even the whole matrix. Matrix just means a system. There's a lot of systems in place. Systems in themselves are not bad. Systems is just how things work. And so whereas before I used to be extremely just against Saturn, against any kind of systems against any kind of times, timing, you know, the big black box, all of that stuff, it's way deeper than that. And at the simple basic root, it all comes from God. God is both evil and good. God is both ugly and beautiful. God is dark and light. Everything comes from God. Everything, God is the full spectrum of everything. And... So my whole idea behind wedding rings has changed. I wear my wedding ring because I recognize now how important divine timing is and how important to me and sacred to me that divine timing of my marriage to my husband is. I wear my ring because I want it to be a catalyst in my mind to remind me 
of the moment yesterday of all of these just awakenings and realizations happening. I want it to remind me of the amount of appreciation I have for my husband, for myself, for my family, for my friends, for anybody I meet, even you guys watching these videos and leaving comments, whether it's here on Instagram or Facebook, or if you follow me on Twitter, because I have one of those now. <laughs> um, if you're in the Facebook group, it you know, it doesn't matter. It's, it, it's a reminder to me. I have a specific intention behind it. I'm not just unconsciously, mindlessly doing something because that's what the world expects of me. I now have an understanding that many don't have. And I'm exercising that understanding and I'm placing my intention behind it so that this now becomes a sacred symbol for me in its own way. And that's just one way beyond having appreciation for people that just this one realization has changed my life totally and completely. So beyond the deep stuff, <laughs> physically, in the basic mundane level, I'm just freaking excited as well to have been with this wonderful human being for six years, married to him for three years, to see the amount of growth that we've had and to see how much we've been able to manifest from the spiritual realm to the physical realm because we've made the changes and we're going through changes right now both of us individually and together that are hard that are difficult and just looking back on the last six years total being together and the last three years being in that marriage commitment has shown me that literally I can go through anything and so can he and that we're together for a reason we're meant to play upon each other's strengths and weaknesses and that's what I'm going to continue to do. That's what he's going to continue to do. We're going to continue to grow together and continue to be the deepest mirrors to each other that we can. Even if it frustrates us because we don't want to deal with our own crap. You know, at the end of the day, neither one of us are afraid to tell each other the truth about ourselves. Um, which is one thing that I both love and don't like all the time. But yeah. So anyways, I wanted to share that with you guys. Um, also, I just wanted to quickly update you. I know the last time I talked to you, I was talking about um, major shifts going on in my life, which is still happening. Um, and one of the things, the first thing I talked about was my diet and how I was going through some detox slash, slash purging. Um, since then, I have gone, I went through a very, very deep purging where actually both my husband and I, um, but I'll speak mainly on myself, I went through huge just what people would call a sinus infection um, so I'm not sure you can probably still hear it in my voice um, but there were two days where it was just really really bad um, but I continued to eat raw foods only and some nuts um, as well um, but raw foods and water and that was it um, I rarely ever had juice unless it was in a smoothie and stuff like that and I'm still eating raw right now and it hasn't been like it, it, even though it was forced for me, it didn't feel forced. Like the first few days, it felt forced, but then it kind of just fell into this like natural groove of it. Um, so right now, I'm still eating raw. Um, I feel really, really good. I'm still purging in many ways, um, healing from the the deep purging of my throat chakra and my third eye chakra, were the two main parts that were really being worked on through um, that what people would call sickness. Um, I just call it dis-ease because things were out of harmony, out of tune, and they were being retuned. For my husband, it was the same. It was third eye and throat chakra um, areas that were really being upgraded and expanded. And I have an understanding of why. That's something I won't share yet until I'm given the go-ahead to. But um, there's a lot of things that I do want to share with you guys. I know I've mentioned that I was in a car accident. I'll be sharing that with you guys. Um, us moving literally in less than a month now I'll be sharing that with you guys as well the story behind those two things um, and I'll continue to update you on my diet and things like that um, but one thing I wanted to make sure that I stated and I've stated this in a comment um, I think on that video is that I've realized that it's not about the diet itself it's about the addictions and the attachments to the food and that's what's most being challenged for me and my husband right now with eating raw is the attachment that I have to my favorite foods, my comfort foods, the cooked foods, um, things like that, and, and being able to detach myself from it. 
Um, I can't say that I'll be raw forever. I can't say in the future. I can't even say tomorrow what my diet will be, what I'll be eating, and I'm not at this point worried about it at all. For the first time in my life, I am not stressed or worried about what I'm going to eat um, and if I'm going to continue to eat raw or not. I'm not doing like a raw challenge or anything like that. Um, I just know that in this moment I'm being tested and that I'm moving through this test and I'm working through my attachments and things like that. Um, so I wanted to just quickly update you guys on that because I know if you're in the Facebook group I've been updating you guys on how I've been feeling. If you're in the immersive you already know because there was a couple days there where I was just moving really slow <laughs> and thankfully you guys were just very just like girl take your time. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, still still not using AC, so still sweating out every day, still purging out that way, um, drinking lots of water, eating raw. Um, I feel really, really good. Um, and despite being sick during that period of time when I wasn't feeling the best, I still had the most energy I've still like ever had in a very long time. So I have a lot of energy. I'm feeling really good. I'm really excited about life in general. And I'm just excited to take you guys on this journey still with me. I mean, if you've been here from the beginning, from two years ago with Pursuing Change, you guys know it's been a freaking journey with a lot of twists, turns, changes, shifts, all of that. Breaks, all of that. <laughs> um... So, yeah, and if you're just if you're just now meeting me, hi, I'm Amora, and join me on this and see how much your life changes as well. Just begin to notice because I'm telling you the divine timing is just freaking so on point. So on point, it's crazy. Uh, so anyways, I will see you guys in the next video. I love you and thank you so much for watching. Bye.